Hello everyone! So we're a good ways into this spring semester, and the end of April's coming up, and every junior out of senior knows exactly what that means. LAS. So the Liberal Arts Symposium is this annual event that happens mostly every year. I know it didn't happen last year, unfortunately, because of COVID. But it usually showcases students' research and projects that they complete throughout the year. Student presentations usually will occur uh, all across campus. They can be in academic buildings, they can be in the museum, patios, or pavilions. Who knows where. Uh, unfortunately, with LAS, you'll, you'll never ever watch everything. So you can either take the nomadic uh, journey where you just walk around and hope you find something interesting, or you can plan it out ahead of time. I don't know how many people actually do that, but hats off to you for doing that. Since most of the seniors will complete uh, some sort of project or a thesis or internship throughout the year, LAS is usually where you'll find their presentation on it. So while, I, while I'm not a senior, I've actually had a unique opportunity presented to me. Alyosha Perez uh, reached out to me at the beginning of the semester with this idea that he'd been working on for a film. So at this point, all I knew about Ali was that he was just this like bizarre guy. <laughs> when I took digital video production my sophomore year, Alyosha is making these unsettling murder death filled experiences. They wouldn't explore these themes. They would like force your eyes open and then they crawl inside and everyone in the class was just wondering what the hell they just like watched. So I was nervous, uh, not just because it was a large project, but because honestly I was a little scared of the guy. So anyways, he explained to me that he's making a film, it's a love story that has sci-fi elements and robots and virtual reality. According to the LAS website, The Screen Between Us is a short film which explores the relationship between humans and AI, which is a premise that I guess makes sense when you consider that Ali's POE title is digital media storytelling with human behavior. I think I think his project's a little on the nose. He wanted me to work as the film score, which is something I have no experience with, but I was excited to have my first true experience working on a film. And saying yes has led to Probably one of the best academic experiences in my time at Juniata. Ah, but before I talk briefly about my point of view so far, I'll let Ali talk a bit about the challenges of his directorial debut, because who better? So without further ado, here's Ali to talk about his film. So I've kind of wanted to do film for a long time. I remember Saturday night at my house, me and my family would always watch movies. And then kind of from there, I got interested in stop motion. So I made a couple small, kind of pretty crappy, bad, you know, Lego stop motion type things. But honestly, from there and just watching more movies and reading more about film, it definitely piqued my interest. A lot of my other projects were essentially just me by myself, pretty much doing everything from filming to editing. And now, for example, I'm working with people editing, people doing the sound, um, you know, working with having one or two uh, people be behind a camera to help me film. So that's definitely um, the scope, I'd say, has definitely grown for sure. How would you say <laughs> your, your artistic style has kind of culminated for this project? Um, well, i definitely say that on DVP1 or Digital Video Production 1, learning a lot of the more technical skills definitely helped me with this project as well. Um, I'd like to think I still kind of kept a little of my dark themes from Digital Video Production 1. <laughs> you know, the kind of murder themes and whatnot. I'd always wanted, uh, ever since I knew you could do a, a thesis film, ever since I was a sophomore, I wanted to do something that was, I guess, a little more kind of darker sci-fi and sci-fi especially because you know you usually need kind of a bigger budget to do a sci-fi film but i wanted to see perhaps if i could do something that was essentially more of a low budget type movie but hopefully still make it as compelling the specific idea was always i wanted to explore the themes of being trapped and being in control especially during the pandemic where really um simply being isolated um, at my sister's house was quite a feeling of being trapped and hardly well we could obviously go outside but there definitely wasn't much to do and just 
a total almost being cut off a bit from the world definitely kind of inspired me to write such a thing I'd say um, you know I'm kind of disorganized as a person and sometimes like I'll forget to reach out to everyone to let them know when we're filming or be kind of last minute <laughs> you know um, so that has kind of definitely challenged my organizational skills um, I'm definitely more of an introverted person too so you know it's sometimes always an uphill battle to come onto set and have to direct um, some actors to do a scene for sure or ask people to do what I want them to do um, so that's definitely a challenge that comes with it but um, it's definitely been rewarding working with all these people like I said most of them are just doing or on this project because they just want to which is pretty cool would you say it's your biggest challenge or would you say that there's a bigger challenge um, besides that, the other challenge is just kind of also accepting that this is a bit of a learning experience too. Um, it took me such a long time to finish the script. I did about seven to eight drafts of it, um, simply because I was never satisfied. And if I had more time, I probably would do five more drafts of it. I'm still not satisfied with the script. <laughs> I don't think I ever will be. Um, it's also just challenging when you look at footage that you shot that day, just if something, person is like, a little bit out of frame or something just looks off not just wanting to reshoot the whole scene and just delete everything so just kind of accepting that those little mistakes might be in there and how to resolve them as a filmmaker is definitely um, been a learning process for me and I think that's just one of kind of almost a beautiful thing about film in general is it's really often a problem solution um, type of art I think you know just when you go out and film often what you think or what idea you have in your head is just not going to be the same as what's as what as the footage that you're going to look on the computer and you kind of just have to accept that and just kind of figure out solutions so that's yeah so that's Ali and I get to work on his film and I've always heard that the relationship between a film score and a director should be very very close knit and this is because when you have a shared vision for a project that is a large scale and very time intensive, um, when a film director hands you a film, they're, they're basically like passing off their baby to you. They're just like, I'm trusting you to take care of this and not mess up everything I've done so far. So for as much pressure as that is for me as the film scorer, it's actually a lot of pressure for Ali just to like trust me with this. But I think we've had an awesome working relationship so far. We usually meet about once or twice a week and we'll talk about progress on the film, we'll talk about things I've done, we'll talk about things he's done, um, we'll set goals to tackle big sections of the film, and sometimes we even just talk um, to get into each other's headspace and de-stress about um, something big and stressful related to our week. Scoring this film has been my first big challenge in applying my musical knowledge for songwriting and supplementing visual images. But more importantly, I've discovered the importance of setting the director up for success along the way as well. Because like most things, the different parts of a film are linked in some sense to each other. If I can help Ali think through his schedule, it might allow him to focus more on the technical and creative side of filming. And if that gets done faster and he doesn't have to worry about some administrative mumbo-jumbo of the film, um, filming might be completed quicker, meaning I receive footage sooner, meaning I finish my part as fast as possible and things don't pile up last minute. Uh, I, I'd say, all in all, seeing Ali's film come to life is this, like, it's this half stressful, half thrilling adventure. I, I think this is something that we really only could have dreamed of way back when we were taking digital video production together. And while it's true that this film won't be premiering at LAS, uh, there are a lot of interesting projects and other films that will be there as well. LAS is one of my most favorite Gioni Juniata traditions because of that. I just, I have no idea what I'm going to look at every, every year. It could be um, learning about Brexit. It could be looking at the relationship of horseshoes to Cumulo Nimbi. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going to be there. There's a website where you can check it out, um, and I'll link that down below. But browse through them, go find some, some interesting things, and have a good time. More information will be coming out on this channel slash account in about two weeks. 
Uh, Rohan will tell you all about where you can watch Ali's film, as well as a bunch of other film projects people have made throughout the year. But until then, thank you for tuning in and listening to my anecdote. I hope you guys enjoy LAS, and I hope you guys enjoy Ali's film.